continue giving you more updates as and when we get them. Now, to matters politics and the swearing in of James Nyoro as a Kiambu governor will now be conducted today at the county headquarters. A notice in the special issue, or issue rather, of the Kenya Gazette and the County uh, Gazette published late Thursday indicated that the event will start at 10 a.m. Now, the notice was signed by the Kiambu County Secretary Martin Bogwa. The decision to swear, the, uh, to swear Nyoro was impeached, was impeached, um, uh, actually the decision to swear in Nyoro came after um, Ferdinand Waititu was impeached and uh, the initial swearing failed to take place on Thursday after a judge dispatched by the judi judiciary raised the legal issues with the manner the event was planned. All right, we will have our reporters on the ground just to bring us up to date, uh, you know, when it comes uh, to matters swearing in of James Nyoro as the governor of uh, Kiambu County. A lot of political intrigues are playing out right there. Yesterday was expected to be sworn in as the third governor. That didn't happen. So we expect the swearing in to happen today. And our reporter on the ground will be giving us more details later on as and when it develops. Remember, there's lots of legal discussion about uh, on this particular swearing in of James in Europe between the leader of majority Kipchumba Murkomen and also his counterpart Mutula Kilonzo Jr. And a couple of them remember weighed in on how this was going to happen with Kipchumba Murkomen, the, sen the senator of Elgeo Marakwet, saying that this was not going to happen unless there was a notice in the Gazette um, talking about uh, the date and the uh, and the and the venue of that. Uh, you know, the swearing in ceremony, and that did not happen. Hence the reason as to why that happened yesterday. The swearing on didn't happen. But later on, we got a statement from the judiciary, uh, John Onyego, who was supposed to swear in Nyoro, and the re giving reasons as to why the swearing in did not happen. And uh, But now, with that Gazette notice from uh, Kiambu County that was released yesterday, as uh, specifically the speaker of uh, Kiambu County, uh, saying that uh, the swearing in will indeed happen today. And we'll have our reporters on the ground, Patrick Amimo and uh, Mark Namasua as well, just to try and unpack what this means for, for the political scene in the county of uh, Kiambu, which already has a lot of political division between MCA's allied uh, to Ferdinand Waititi, to the immediate former of uh, Kiambu County, and also those allied uh, to Deputy Governor of uh, Kiambu, James Nyoro, who has been on an acting capacity uh, since the judiciary bad you know, fighting and trade to, to from uh, stepping into office. Now, but still on that, and supporters of uh, Kiambu Deputy Governor James Inyoro's hopes uh, to have him take oath of office as governor following an impeachment vote by the Senate uh, were dashed on uh, uh, Wednesday. Now, following a series of legal lapses, one and uh, one of the assumption of office of the Governor Act 2019 stipulates hours of oath are taking to between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. The judge showed up at 2.20 p.m. The same law uh, dem demands for the publication of the swearing-in ceremony in the Kenya Gazette, which was not done. Mark Namaswa reports. The organizing team at the Kiambu County Headquarters rushed through a meticulous setup for a swearing-in ceremony of Dr. James Nyoro as the next Kiambu governor. But as the morning wore on, something seemed amiss. Justice John Onyego, tasked by the judiciary to administer the oath, did not turn up at the podium. By 11 a.m., Nyoro's supporters were still hopeful. Eh, kwanza ningetaka kusema kwamba hatuna wasiwasi wowote. Kwa maana tulipoanza hii process, tulianza tukijua kuna shida Kiambu. And we are very happy eh, for the third governor of Kiambu to be sworn in, eh, Dr. Nyoro. At 1 p.m. a convoy of vehicles appeared, sending Nyoro supporters to the red carpet in celebration. <laughs> But neither did the judge nor the governor-designate show up. At this juncture, a section of politicians sensed something was not adding up. They marched to the Kiambu law court to protest why a judge was not turning up to conduct the ceremony. 
right now. We want to know what is happening. We want to go to the judge's office and know what is happening. Yeah. Because they have been telling us to wait at the county office. They are coming to do the swearing in since 9 a.m. Tumekojea tangu saa mbili na hatujaona huyu jaji kila wakati tunaambiwa anakuja 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 On their return it had already clocked 2 p.m. The assumption of office of governor act number no. 4 of 2019 stipulates hours of oath taking to between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. Further, a response from Justice John Onyego later indicated that the judiciary was ready to administer the oath upon meeting provisions of the same law that, among others, demand for the publication of the notice of swearing in in the Kenya Gazette. This had not been done. After an entire day of anxiety and pressure, the moment of reality came for supporters of uh, Deputy Governor James Nyoro when it dawned on them that the function could not happen this day after all. Unfortunately, we cannot do it now because it is 20 past two. If we do it, it shall be an exercise in futility. I am still in there acting as the county governor of this great county. Some political observers have linked Waititu's tribulations to his alignment with the Tanga Tanga movement, aside from his string of corruption cases. His opponents have also picked up the chorus for support of the post-handshake government and its pet project, the Building Bridges Initiative, BBI. The problems that are bedeviling this country, which should be addressed by BBI, is because both our constitution and our acts of parliament did not consider special circumstances such as those ones we have found ourselves in. Until Kiambu County Committee of Assumption of Governor's Office complies with provisions of the law, Dr. Nyoro remains in acting capacity. Whitey too lacks in the corridors of justice as residents await for a new swearing-in date. Mark Namaswa, KTN News. All right, so what is the way forward for Kiambu, uh, the former immediate Kiambu governor, Fadin and Waititu, now that Nyoro will take over as the third governor of Kiambu County today once he's sworn in? We need to pick up the legal mind of uh, Dr. Um, uh, Alutalala Mukwana, who's a political analyst and also an advocate, joining us via way of phone. And thank you so much, um, uh, Dr. Tai, for talking to us here on KTN News Centre this morning. Let's begin first by the decision by the Senate to impeach Waititu. Was the procedure, you know, really fair, the procedure of, of you know, voting out Waititu as the governor? Was Waititu given a fair hearing by the senators? Thank you very much for the invitation. Now, uh, first and foremost, uh, let us keep it very plain and simple for the interest of our viewers. Number one, on the first of it all, the Senate appears to have followed due process because it received a notification from the Speaker of the County Assembly of Kiambu stating the grounds and the manner in which the County Assembly of Kiambu followed in impeaching the governor. So yes, to that extent, the procedure was fair. He was also allowed legal representation. And that is what we call due process. However, therein lies another problem. Honorable Aichitu has complained that the procedure at the assembly was wrong on three grounds. One, that there was no quorum. Now, the county government act stipulates that there must be two thirds quorum for the motion to impeach the governor to go through. The allegation is that there were only 57 members of the assembly. So the question that we should be asking ourselves, did the Senate ignore this, or was it enough 
that the documentation from the speaker is all that the Senate required. In my view, the Senate needed to go deeper and confirm that indeed the process at the county assembly was flawless. Number two, the communication from the county assembly of Kiambu to the Senate was late. Is that delay fatal to due process? In my view, it will all depend on the interpretation by the judge. If the judge looks at the wider interest, and under civil law, we say that you look at the overriding objective of what that law intends to do. What is in the wider interest the best option? So if the court will decide that, no, 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 procedure was not necessary, then Waititu has no chance. Finally, he says that at the county assembly, he was convicted and heard. Now, that is a bit difficult to comprehend because his lawyers were present, and in law, when your lawyers are present, you are deemed to have been present and heard. All right, so you're telling us from my understanding that the Senate did not act well. So did the Speaker of the Senate, Kenneth Lusaka, you know, the ruling that he made that did not allow Waititu to, to submit the evidence in terms of quorum, that the Senate erred in doing that? Because he... That is different. You see, if what Waititu was attempting to do was to bring evidence outside the stipulated time, then the point that the speaker was ruling on was not whether or not the complaint was valid. Rather, it was about the timelines within which the evidence was being brought. Now, I want you to remember the presidential uh, petition by Honorable Raila against President Kibaki in what is infamous referred to as the Mutunga decision. Honorable Raila's team sought to introduce volumes of pages after the closure of the timeline. And Honorable Mutunga's uh, judges, in their own wisdom, ruled that they could not allow it. It was on that basis alone that Honorable Raila lost that petition. He did not lose because he did not have ground. He lost because his team sought to bring the evidence after the door had been closed. So that has to be very clear to our viewers, that what Honorable Lusaka was addressing himself to was not the veracity of the claim by Wachitu's team. Rather, it was the timeline in which they had raised, they had sought to bring the evidence. All right, so let's talk about, you know, Waititu's political life. So what is the way forward for, for Honorable Waititu? Because Nyoro, we expect him to be sworn in. His deputy has been on an acting capacity as the governor of Kembu to be sworn in today. So what is the way forward for him? His political career, is it dead? Look, it's a long haul. We are in this thing, and Baba Yao will be on this journey for a long time. On Monday, his team and himself will appear before Justice Macau. If he loses at that stage, he still has the option to proceed to the Court of Appeal. And even if he loses at that level, he still has the last bullet, which is the Supreme Court. Therefore, in terms of seeking redress for what he considers a transgression of his rights, Babayao has a long way ahead of him. Or, or... But in terms of politics, in terms of politics, what lesson does his impeachment teach him? And what does it teach those who are in his camp who have been referred to as Tanga Tanga. To Baba Hill, and in my honest view, the lesson is simple, that not all who have been lining up in the Tanga Tanga squad will stop the bullet for you. Because let's face it, those senators who have been presumed to be in the Tanga Tanga squad and therefore loyal to the deputy president, Arab Samoy Ruto, are 32. Where were they? So it is possible that those who are in his team or presumed to be in his team have either been compromised 
or they have been intimidated by the state power, of course, to Honorable Hutu's lead. Number two, what lesson does this send to the son of Ruto? The lesson is simple. And this lesson began in 1992 when Kenya got the first chance to be a, dem a multi-party democracy. From 1992, Brenda, the Agikuyu community has never disappointed their own. And this, therefore, is a warning shot to Arab Samoy Ruto that all those 172 MPs and 32 senators may just be by his side until the Agikuyu call them back home. That is the sad reality of Kenyan politics. All right. Thank you so much.